Many studies have documented the poor outcomes that are associated with stroke, including difficulties with mobility, dexterity, gait and balance, as well as cognitive impairment and dementia. However, many of the studies to date have short follow-up periods or focus on patients who have more severe strokes. Based on this, the long-term outcomes following a minor stroke are currently unclear. Between May 2010 and May 2012, we consecutively recruited in and out patients with minor ischemic stroke who were assessed here at the Lothian Stroke Services in Edinburgh. Patients were then subtyped as cortical or lacuna based on clinical stroke syndrome. We invited all patients back for follow-up at both one and three years following their index stroke, and we made every effort possible to obtain outcomes for all participants. To do this, we offered living participants a face-to-face -face assessment, either in the hospital or in their home. And where this wasn't possible, questionnaire data was collected over the phone or via mail-out. Death certificates and medical records were reviewed to determine cause of death for participants who were deceased at three years. At three years, we assessed cognition, physical functioning and depression, as well as further vascular events, vascular risk factors, and socio-demographic information. We assessed three-year outcomes in 224 participants, giving us a follow-up rate of 85%. 202 participants provided data either in person or via the phone or mail out, and 22 were deceased. Our findings show that there are long-term negative consequences following a minor ischemic stroke. This was particularly true for cognition. Of those with the cognitive assessment, almost half were impaired, and the cognitive dysfunction was global, affecting all subscales of both the ACER and the MOCA. Being older, being a male, and having a lower peak cognitive ability and lower cognitive functioning at one year were all associated with poorer cognition at three years. Of those with physical functioning assessments, almost a third were impaired. Being older, having had a recurrent stroke, and also having had a more severe stroke were all associated with poorer physical functioning at three years. We show an association between physical functioning and cognition, such that those who have poorer physical functioning are also more likely to have poorer cognitive functioning. In terms of disability, a modified ranking score of 3 to 5, which indicates moderate to severe disability, was reported in 12% of patients. This was associated with older age, a more severe stroke at index, a recurrent stroke, and self-reported cognitive difficulties at one year. And in terms of depression, 43% of patients reported moderate to severe depressive symptoms. More depressive symptoms were associated with being male and having had a recurrent stroke. We achieved a high follow-up rate at three years post minor ischemic stroke, and we showed that impairments are common, particularly with cognition, but also in physical functioning and mood. Physical difficulties are often the focus in clinical practice, especially in the cases of more severe stroke. And based on the relationship that we show between physical and cognitive functioning, the identification of those with physical difficulties may assist us in identifying those who also have cognitive difficulties. It is important to identify those who have cognitive difficulties as it can impact on the patient's independence and their ability to monitor and control other risk factors, such as taking hypertensive medications. Future research should focus on changes in functioning over time. This might help us to better understand the trajectories of recovery since they're likely to have an important impact on the patient's quality of life.